I met you because I sent out a call for a group of pastors to come in and talk about this vision that I had of a PhD program in African American preaching, and you came. And you were so energetic, enthralled. What was common in that group was such a love of black preaching. Oh, yes. So could you talk about your love? And mm -hmm. you come all the way across the country to hang out. Um, it is a window that we open. Um, it's a house that we build. Um, it's a valley we walk through. I think that African-American preaching has the marvelous capacity to contain every experience and every emotion and somehow every thought um, that flows through our community. It is, um, I was reading something last week, just because I'm horrible in history, so I'm always, and geography, I'm worse in geography than history, so I just try to read these elementary things. And I was reading about, or if I call it the wrong thing, I think it's the continental divide, mm -hmm. how certain rivers and oceans flow a certain way and, the, and to certain basins, whether it's the, the um, Bering Sea or the, what would that be, the Pacific or the Gulf and Atlantic and whatever other um, body of water. But I think to watch the flow of the water as it streams down from scripture and all that it catches and carries with it is the most exciting thing in the world. Um, I know self-care is very important. My greatest struggle, which you have not asked me, is to play, and it always has been, to find something that I can honestly call play, because I think that makes a balanced person and healthy. So I'm still working on that, I haven't gotten there. Because my play is in the preaching. Mm. Um, that's where the imagination has no limits. When I read the text, I hear music. If I tell this to the people, they throw me out. <laughs> I actually tried this once. Um, I was preaching, I hadn't moved there at the Potter's house, and I could hear the o William Tell, this is absurd, but I could hear the Will William Tell overture to the text where um, the prophet is telling the king, you should have struck the arrow three times. Um, do you know what I'm talking about? Now, why I heard that music to this text, but that's, you know, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. That, that's where I was as this was going and open the window and the arrow goes out. And, um, and I actually asked the musician to play it. And he was classically trained. And it connected for me, but it was a big mistake. It fell flat with the audience. It was like, and what is going on? <laughs> and I flew from Texas to New Jersey and did the same message like a couple hours later. And it connected with that audience perfectly. They got it. I don't know what it was, but I hear music, I hear poetry, I don't paint, but I see colors. Um, everything comes alive. I taste the text, um, and I think that's not unique to me. I think African-American preaching is a vehicle that offers that, mm -hmm. both to the speaker, whichever um, media, whichever avenue, whatever drainage basin, whatever flow of water they want. And the audience can select the hearers, I think a flow that may not even be in the mind of the speaker. The, the imagination, the liberty that we have is marvelous. The metaphors that we can create uh, are outrageously good. Um, it, it's so, um, it's empowering and it's not false. It's not a fake pump up. It's not an emotional, ecstatic um, feeling. It is deeply intellectual. It is a well-integrated personality that brings emotion and mind to embrace. It's mercy and truth are wed together and righteousness and peace have kissed each other. It's the two, it's everything, it's wonderful. Um, I um, say that I'm not a preacher anymore that I don't have all the oomph that I once had, the, the stamina or the voice. Um, so I hope to still be a teacher, but um, I just love to go hear preachers. And whatever they're preaching has all these wonderful tentacles that are bringing texts that they never mention, but they're all coming in the room 
and it feels like that's the cloud of witnesses that's there. The other texts are sitting around cheering that one on. I mean, to, I just, that's play for me. That's fun. And I'm, they tell me I need real play. So I'm trying to, but that's what I love to do.